Footy finals are back. G'day, I'm James Clements, not to be confused with Marcus Ashcroft. Stats boy. Yes. Jeez, I'll tell you what, that's a shocker later on. Uh, welcome to the AFL Today Show, brought to you by Top Sport, the home of footy finals. And I need a shot, because I've got finals fever. A shot of some sort of vaccine to get rid of the finals fever, because boy, <laughs> we're Carlton shocking on the weekend. Anyway, joining me for this midweek madness show are a pair of local weirdos. Some would say AFL experts. I would not be one of them. But we just call them footy nuffs. Over there, it's Alex Donnelly. How good's travelling and watching your team win? Shush you. <laughs> uh, and then we've also got the little fella, the stats boy. Oh, you can't be saying that. We should be getting rid of this scarf as well. We need a hawk scarf in there. No more Carlton. What? Why are they still there? That's a bit rich well, coming from sick. a North fan. Oh, <laughs> we, yeah, yeah we've won the same. Well, back in your box, right? That's <laughs> it's enough from you. Hey, it could be a, a cat's one for all we know. Uh, Today's but... show, we are talking news ticker because there is an absolute plethora of yes. news. Uh, we've got some yeah nahs, but the biggest thing, of course, it's the Midweek Madness Show. That means we get some actual people who know what they're talking about, some big J journalists on the show to talk, I don't know, the team's still in the footy finals, gosh. We're going around the grounds of Lockie McCurdy to talk GWS and a bit of Swans. Who the are already surprisingly in tall Lockie McCurdy. Yes. All right, enough about your man crush on Lockie. We get it. <laughs> and Simeon Glorious Thomas Wilson hair. to talk power and Callum Dick to chat all things Lions, as per usual. Really good chats, actually, uh, so stick around for that. Fun. Before all that, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Get around all of the other shows as well. But, of course, we're going to read out some comments from the YouTube show this week. So make sure you're commenting or we'll send Stats Boy to go fight you. Because let's get into it. Finals Oh, back. I've got finals fever. He's got finals fever. That's a song you would not know, Stats Boy. Alex definitely wouldn't know it either. But no. It's a uh, one from the late 80s. Good movie. I was going to say I was born in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's not like I was out there and just going, oh, I, can't, I can't wait for this Spike Lee movie. You have to go figure that one out. <laughs> Let's do it. The news ticket from the Midweek Madness Show. Bit of news. Everybody wants a trade. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. No, everyone want, from the Western Bulldogs yeah, wants yeah, a trade. Yeah. Everybody's like, you know who I hate? Bevo. Yeah. And then he's like, I'm out. I want no bar of Bevo anymore. Screw this. I'm out of the kennel. Bailey Smith, he's like, nah. I'm just going to like rehab on company time. Yeah. I got hurt on company time. I'm rehabbing. He on went company to Europe time. on company yeah. time as He's well. He's done a lot of things on company time. How good is a paid, you know, actual holiday by your boss? That's awesome. So Bevo's just like forking out all this cash, and <laughs> Bailey Smith's just like, how good is Tuscany? Tuscany. <laughs> and he's just like, you know, out there, what are they, Kentucky tours? Yeah. Bust Imagine about. seeing Bailey Smith on a good tiki tour. Just sitting on the back, just doing beer bongs like it's all going on. <laughs> Bailey Smith. You have a awesome shirt open as well. It'd be 100%. awesome. Uh, Doesn't own a shirt, I don't think. Definitely not on social media, though, yeah. and definitely nothing uh, sus going on. The other one was obviously Jack McRae with three years and two mil to run yes. on his contract. He's yeah. like, I want out. Yeah. I can't get a game. I've been demoted <laughs> from the vice captaincy. I'm not in the leadership group. He's still a good player as well. Is he? Yes. I think. I Sounds think like someone north will give pick 19 up for. No, I would, of course, take him. He's still going to be a good player, I think. He just is, needs a bit of a change. Needs a bit. Bevo's just cooked him. One paste. Yeah. Not an elite user. Unless you want a million hand Boys, balls. But he's, he's going to get you a lot of clearances, a lot of the ball, I think. To be honest, I don't know if like a team like North really we needs don't really a player need him, like that, dude. But I would, of course, take him. He'll end up on St Kilda. Yeah, like St Kilda. I was going to say St Kilda. St Kilda or Geelong. Apparently. Maybe even Richmond. They're just like, ah, come hang for a couple of years. Hmm. So that's a little bit of the trade stuff from the dogs. Also, North is set to offer Jack Darling a two-year contract, <laughs> which is apparently two years too long in my vibe. Oh. Stats guy is thrilled. I'm excited that we're chatting to Luke Parker. That's probably not going to happen, but um, I'll yeah. get my hopes up there. But Jack Darling got dropped from West Coast. And he's like, oh, who's uh, worse than West Coast? North. I we'll just go you, and play. He's so bad. I don't want him. I think you're just intimidated because he's got hairier arms than you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, that's true. But that's it's true. also, he does offer a target up forward. If he can take two or three grabs a game, take some pressure off Super. Yeah, but he doesn't know how to take a grab anymore. Yeah. He's the stats fit, guy, he it. draws someone away. You've oh. said all year, we need help for Suva. Here's help for Suva, and you're complaining. Uh you need help for soup. You need to have something else. So you know how you go into a kebab shop and they've got <laughs> – yes, So your soup is a cooking, right? Like You've got one that looks juicy and there's that manky one. Yeah, yeah it's like, Jack Darling. No, cut it from that one, please. The, the manky one's Jack yeah. Darling. Yeah. yeah. The, the nice, clean, fresh, like, kebab meat yeah. on the spit. Looks delicious. That yeah. He's right there. You're like, yeah, give me some of that one. You could just leave They're Jack like, Darling They go to the chop. Like, no, 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 that one, please. <laughs> please. What's that one? They're like – Lamb? And you're like, that's not lamb. <laughs> you're it's Jack that Darling. Up. It's Jack Darling, anyway. No, nah, fair call. Uh, I don't want him. I was going to say the falafel one. Mm. Other little bits and bobs, the falafel doesn't come on the spit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I mean. That would be a worry. That would be amazing. That's what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what falafel is that? Anyway, that's not falafel. Other little bits of news. Jason McCartney got into... I, 
I don't scuffle. I don't know. That's what the media said. It was a little bit of a shoulder bump and and a couple of swears. 20 grand. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Well, that's because he got fined 20 grand three years ago for abusing umpires. So he's got the prior. Mm. I think he's fine. He's all right. Let the the boys play. Tom Papley. (laughs) Papley deserves it. I'm pretty sure, even if you're on the opposition (laughs) team and you're a coach, it's Tom Papley. You can't get fined for is that. Is this Tom like Papley. you get to fight one person That's theory? just human nature. You see Tom Papley, yeah. you just want to hit him. You're just like, nah, punch in the head. Don't care. And it, the fact that it was only a shoulder bump is actually- Oh, it was like should, a chest bump. They chest should bump. give him 20 grand for not knocking his block off. Oh, I, I Simple agree. As that. I couldn't agree more. Outside of that, some other little bits of news. If we go a bit of Hawks, a bit of Hawk ball. There's a lot with the Hawks, yeah. actually. Lukey Bruce is playing his 300th game this year. Cool. Well, this week, yep. of course. Uh, and this year. Weird, because- doesn't really seem to be giant news. He's a legend of the game. He's got three premierships, obviously that three B, two-time All-Australian, five-time Hawks uh, leading goal kicker, 548 uh, goals, and no one's talking about it. Yeah, he's, a, he's an absolute legend. So when you say no one, we are. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad we are, yeah. But I, I'm just saying, what? Well, rank Paragons, them, rank them, rank start them, now. Uh, um, Paragons of AFL week. Media, AFL Today Show. We True. are a Luke Bruce podcast. Yes. That's what we do. 100%. We are full on with Luke Bruce. We love him. He's awesome. Hey, Come on comes, the show, Luke. Comes from the Great Oval, Nixon Park in Tomorrow. That's where he started out back in the day. There you Doing go. Doing great hot chips and gravy. Oh, uh, nice. But that's fantastic. He's a legend of the game, as you said, stats. Yeah, boy. the fact and, that he had five times Hawks leading goal kicker as a small forward is Unbelievable. With the players that with were around. With the dudes he played God, with. Yeah, Buddy, it's insane. But I was about to say, it was, they were probably all after Buddy and Ruff left, weren't they? Uh, I don't know about all of them, but yeah, most of them. Yeah. Yeah, five years yeah. of down. I was about to say, stuff. yeah, when, when Buddy left, it's like, yeah, okay, he kicked 60. Outside uh, of that, Will Day and Cam McKenzie have already been ruled out for the semi-final for this week, and Frost is out for the season two. I enjoy mm. how they've, they've come in. Like, yep, these two, not playing, but the Frosty news, that sucks. Yeah. Like, They're like, can we get Tom Barras now? Who, yeah, who's coming in for him? There's going to be a guy that's going to be playing in the back line that doesn't have much experience, I think. So oh, well, that's, that's not good. That's for the okay. They'll be on Charlie Dixon or Asava. I yeah. still reckon, yeah. Or Tom Marshall. If you give West Coast whatever you're going to give up for Tom Barras just now, just get him in there this <laughs> What week. if you gave him an extra 20 grand? To West Coast? Yeah. They don't care about the money. Yeah. They just, you might have to throw an extra pick. Yeah. yeah. Just saying. Anyway, get him out there. I don't know why I have to wait till next year. If we're going to give no. Mark, if we're going to give Mark of the Year and Goal of the Year at the end of the regular season, then your contract, I guess, if your team is out, it's a free for all now. Let's <laughs> that go. would be so funny, but doesn't That'd make awesome. any That's sense. Like, is this like the old the the NBA two day contracts? He's like yeah. bang two games. No, this has always been one of my favorite things. Like I think you should have like a pool of players from the knocked out teams that you just get to go. Uh, schoolyard rules. We'll take him. <laughs> I love that. Uh, Outside of that as well, apparently for the board media, Jack Ginevan going, see you in 14 days is <laughs> no, just no, like- not, not the board media, anyone that's over 50. Mm. People are idiots. Yeah. Absolute idiots. Jack Ginevan, hint of confidence going, hey, I'm going to, I hope we are good. I hope we're going to see you at the SCG in 14 days. Oh, you didn't say You can't say that. <laughs> what are you doing? That is a war cry. Shut up, nerds. Also, Let the man cook. Also played with Brody Grundy as well, so they're probably mates. I couldn't think of anything better than Ginevan having a horrible game this week. And him uh, going really See, bad. Stats Guy's a hater. Yeah, that's I what was like called him. out in like our him. YouTube comments. Like, it, stats Guy's a if hater. If he has a horrible game, it's coming back to that but comment. But that's the entire point. <laughs> hey, that's a point. That's why it's exciting and no, fun. No, I like it. It's exciting and Let I'm happy cook. that he did it. But Let I would, him do I'm the just thing. happy if he has a bad game because that would be stinks, so funny. If he stinks, yeah, we all pile on. Yeah. If he's great, if he's great, he backed himself. Exactly. That's why it's rad. You know what it is? It's an absolute flashpoint. It's a flashpoint. We need more flashpoints. You know what footy lacks? Flashpoints. You know why we spend an entire bloody season yelling about <laughs> crap commentary, rubbish umpires, Everyone's on the same level, more on yeah. media? It's because we don't have enough flashpoints yeah, to have stuff to talk about. But that's because anytime someone does it, they say, no, you can't do that. It's that's, not allowed in football. But that's because they're idiots. Yeah. We're not idiots. We celebrate this stuff. And we when cele- you guys get angry about it, that's dumb. <laughs> we're smarter than that. Are we? Uh, uh, no, okay. Uh, we're, we're not that smart, but we're smarter than that. Well, speak for yourself. Uh, All right, let's do it. Paul Marsh is also reviewing the uh, handling of the Petrarca incident, which is hilarious. What's more hilarious is the AFL Players Association yeah. CEO was on holiday for this season. He was on holiday for the last three weeks when it's all like sort of hit off and all the Petrarca stuff. They're like, oh, what have I come back to? Oh, did You've someone almost die? 26 weeks of this season. What is the Players Association CEO <laughs> Doing, Bro, going away season. during that season. What like, is what is Paul Marsh doing in November? Yeah, like, yeah <laughs> nothing. Dude, it's like ah, oh, I'm just I'm just doing busy. I was work. about to say the, the trade period's over. The new CBA negotiations. Dude, go are holiday over. in November. What are you doing, Paul Marsh? This is bizarre. <laughs> hey, uh, the players playing. Yes. What am I? Oh, the players' association. <laughs> Does that correlate? Yes, you idiot. What are you doing? <laughs> Do your bloody job, Paul. Anyway, seriously, like 
November, December, go on holiday then. No one cares. You can go you on holiday eat. in February. No one cares. Anyway, yeah, this is Petrarca, Yeah, it's going to be Meanwhile, Petrarca nearly dies, and yeah. he's just like, yeah. what's going on? He's like, again, in Tuscany, hanging out with Bailey Smith, just going, I don't have to deal with that till I get home. And Melbourne <laughs> trying to sweep it under the carpet, and then there's going to be a lot of people in trouble with that. Well, yeah, how good is their internal review being the guy that used to run the All Blacks, mm-hmm. but it's also uh, Gary Pert and Brad Green that are helping running the external Review. No, it's an external but, internal review. Yeah. yeah, they're in. They're in the. That yeah, doesn't make the any. Joke. That doesn't that's, make any that's sense. That's why it's good. And apparently, the former All Blacks guy is mates with a bunch of them. So it's like, yeah, this is fine. wait, wait, wait. You're telling me that you're surprised that the boys' club of the AFL is just all going. Hey, who should we get to check on? Oh, our mate over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, hey, uh, stats uh, boy, can you just like review my performance, buddy? It was buddy old pal. <laughs> I'm like, you've shown the bad about me, old special. <laughs> is that why I didn't get the uh, exceeds expectations stats guy? Uh, yes. God yep. damn it. It was all because of my bonus. Stats. Sorry about that. It was all because of stats boy. Yeah. yeah. He's actually in charge of that. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, damn it. <laughs> speaking of AFL players and their welfare, Gary Rowan fractured his skull. Yeah. What the hell? That is accidental, brutal. Accidental elbow in the VFL in game. In the VFL last week. Yeah. That Horrible. could be him done. Well, I don't know if he's contracted yeah. again this year. There's not many things that, yeah, you have to stop for, but surely a fractured skull is that you're not coming back from. And it depends how yeah, horrible it is. Pretty tough. Fractured, mm-hmm. fractured skull. skull's horrible regardless, I yeah. think, yeah. stats guy. No good. Uh, you think about Harry Froling in the NBL, so hasn't done yeah, that for right. two years, mm-hmm. basically since that horrible incident in, I want to say, the gong. Uh, yes. And, yeah, just stuff like that. It's just brutal. So hopefully Gary Rowan's all right, but juice. Uh, other little bits and bobs. Mark Keane signed an extension at Adelaide. Just, oh, that's a reward sure. for a job well done. <laughs> but no, right, because but when he left, remember he left with a week to go in the season before they had to play oh, the Swans? Right, yeah. yeah, he's not coming back, is he? He's like, no, 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 I'm in. Guys, I'm in. <laughs> okay, no one else wanted him. That's yeah. great. And the grand final parade is a new route. I so am, they're not doing the thing down the no. River at, least again? at least it's not on the river. That's a positive. So it's not on the river. Yeah, cool. Which is fine. It is, however, just like a parade from Melbourne Park, John Can Arena precinct down Birong Mar, through yeah. Birong Mar and back to the MCG. That's like a ten minute walk. Like, what, what, happened, are we doing what happened to bloody Flinders? Yeah, you go fang up. You I know, think it Burke should Street. be yeah Burke or go Flinders. Go Burke Street, like go up to Parliament House, say yeah. g'day to Jacinta Allen, go thanks for the holiday, <laughs> on yours. And then you just scoot back down the hill, down back behind yeah. Treasury Place, and boom, you're back at the G. What was wrong with it? Go past oh, your place. Caused too much <laughs> havoc on the old uh, on the roads. I don't care. I'm not driving. It's Friday. <laughs> it's Friday, Friday in the Public city. Holiday. Holiday. Who's, Who's driving in the clo- city clo- anyway? Every street. Between all the protests and everything anyway, you got the CFMEU causing all sorts yeah. of havoc. Every, got, every road's blocked off anyway. It's so. like, whatever, man. Just like just yeah. don't catch a tram up Collins Street or Burke Street that <laughs> afternoon. You're laughing. Just walk up to Parliament train station. You'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, either way, maybe we should have it like combined with Moomba. <laughs> where we have, can we get them on jet skis or something up the air? And what do we, we need do with jet skis? Yeah, I know. And do we need what? Do we need a king and queen of the AFL as well? Yeah, like Gary, Ablett, <laughs> Gary Ablett Jr. and uh, Daisy. Lachlan. There we go. Daisy uh-huh. as well, yeah. We're going to say Daisy. Yeah. Anyway, the grand final parade route sucks. Right. Midweek winners and losers of the week. Before we get to our chats with the Big J journalists, a.k.a. the guys who actually know what they're talking about, winner of the week, Geelong? Because the Bailey Smith news breaks. Everyone's like, oh, I just got it, Geelong. You just go. They, they know, always just everyone, get the best play. They just get the best. They don't even hell ever have a salary cap because the tax players played for their entire stadium. It's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know how Geelong by smashing Port Adelaide on the weekend. They just turn around and just go. Oh, we'll also just get Bailey Smith. We'll yeah, play him on yeah, ball. we'll get. That, that he wants to play on ball. We'll play on ball. He's like, sick, bro. <laughs> Gnarly, man. I love surfing. Also love beer bombs. It's such a weird connection He's also to Geelong. with the long hair trio. Or do it. The yeah. only connection they have to Geelong They're, they're presenting with like a brand new <laughs> white headband. Yeah. <laughs> brand new, yeah, <laughs> cotton awesome. on headband. The only connection they have with Geelong and Bailey Smith is the cotton on brand. Obviously, that's a Geelong brand. That is the most random correlation to a, yeah, he's definitely going there. I've never heard. Chris Scott also said, yeah, man, we'll play you on the ball. Yeah. Like, we won't bevo you. Of course. Other winners, as mentioned, board media, because they're like, Jack Goodman said something on the internet. <laughs> and then they just all flip their lid. They're you know, still the, talking it is about quite literally the later. dumbest thing in the world. Ginnivan having like a hint of confidence in his team to back it up and like being a prelim. That's what you want your players to feel like. You want them to feel confident, feel confident yeah. and just be like, right, let's go. And for the dumbest people in the media to be like, you can't say that in footy is the dumbest thing in the world. Let him go. It's awesome. Yeah. I love it, Jack. Well, it's like Sam Sam, Sam Draper halfway through the year said, uh, yeah. McRae, Daniel, and so-and-so will leave the Western Bulldogs. And he got in trouble. And yeah. he got the two-week suspension from the podcast. Hey, he was right. He was spot in on, fairness, yeah. I think like most of us knew that was going to happen. But he was he was right. Uh, midweek losers of the week, uh, the entire Brains Trust at Carlton. Uh, the fallout from that has been rapid mm. and brutal. Uh 
we haven't. I haven't obviously been on the show. I wasn't on Sunday's show apart from my little uh, revolving moose head camera <laughs> yeah. in front of Gabba. It was revolving. But, yeah, everybody second-guessing every decision that everyone made at Carlton has been really fun. So Twitter has been an awesome place to speak for Carlton fans. <laughs> Don't go on Twitter. Carlton fans have been having fun just uh, toweling up Carlton. It's like, you didn't make finals either. Shut up. Ah, they won the flag last year. They can they Yeah, can last year. Didn't make finals. Shut up. Ah. Yeah, it is a very easy rip, eh? It's like, hey, did you make the finals? Oh, no, you didn't make the finals. Interesting. Yeah, but Pies fans won't care. They're and still no. celebrating for last either year. Either way, the brains trust of Carlton look very, very stupid. And uh, losers were also, I don't know, Carlton fans, I think I got six straight emails from Luke Sayers, the president of the Carlton Football Club. Really? Uh, my son is a member, but obviously oh. they've just gone send, send, send. Yeah. <laughs> and something has gone awry. Was that after chip. the I don't know. Was that after the on. six emails you sent him after the game? Yeah, there were yeah. pretty abusive <laughs> ones. Yeah. Yeah. I used some pretty harsh words. <laughs> nah. Also, uh, Hawthorne fans getting the uh, price gouging going to uh, Oh, that's Adelaide. every year. It's so yeah, annoying. Yeah, but it still so sucks. Annoying. That is a midweek loser as well. It yeah, is we haven't talked about that. We have a premier partner with partnership with Virgin in the AFL and they every time there's flights, like, you know what we're going to do? Not help out Yeah, about fans. five years ago, they were like, yeah, we'll stop the uh, the prices from going up. No, that's the last nothing. Like, at least they bought in the anti-scalping laws for the tickets, which is good. Mm. The uh, anti-scalping stuff has worked really well. It does, so having just been price gouged myself by going to Brisbane on the mm. weekend, but avoiding that by flying back first thing Monday uh, rather than the Sunday, it would have cost just giant amounts of money to go home, yeah. home on the sat- Sunday. Luckily, the squid had a curriculum day on Monday. All good. <laughs> but it was... It shouldn't be so hard to go, right, we have X amount of tickets for- But we saw it with Gather Round too. AFL members, and we can like cap prices on these flights. Simple as that, right? We've blocked out this, this, this with our partners. They'll be more expensive because we're, you know, free market and all that. Here we go. But it should at least have a cap. Like This should be a part of what you're doing with AFL if you're going to grow it and you want fans there. Meanwhile, we're going to have a GWS Brisbane game that's going to have like no one at it this week. So mm. No, they're expecting 20 odd thousand there. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, let's, I'm going to have a look at what the crowd. flights to Adelaide are right now. Nice one. All right, there you go. That's the midweek winners and losers of the week. We will be back with some yeah nahs. after our chat. We're going to chat, I believe, first with Simeon Thomas-Wilson about the power. Then we will chat with Lockie McCurdy about GWS and the Sydney Swans. And then Callum Dick about the hated Brisbane Lions who battered my blues. Right after... This. All right, it is the Midweek Madness Show. What does that mean? We get some big J journos on, and one of the biggest Js out there is Simeon Thomas Wilson. Oh. Out there with the Tizer with code SPORTS. Simeon, how is the vibe over out west in Radelaide after the Powers capitulation to oh. the Cats last week? Yeah, a bit uh, less of a vibe than there was this time <laughs> last week. I can imagine. Um, I guess, yeah, we all, nearly everyone thought that they were going to Roll the cats after, uh, especially with Tom Stewart being laid out. And mm. then, yeah, just absolutely um, capitulate themselves. It was, yeah, it was tough to watch. It was really, it was really bad. I mean, it wasn't um, as tough as watching my bull of blues just completely uh, crack down close. their legs, but oh. it was also, it wasn't great. <laughs> yeah, but at uh, least Port Adelaide were in the game at some point. Carlton never were. Uh, okay, yeah, that's enough about Carlton. <laughs> uh, but I mean, what's been the sort of fallout? Over there after the sort of showing that we copped, I mean, was there just sort of that disappointment? Was it like, oh, here we go again, a resignation sort of vibe? What do you think? Yeah, I think it was a lot of, like, it was a bit of a shock, but then when you think about it, it wasn't if it made sense because it's just the same old story for Port Adelaide Mm. in their last maybe three to four finals. They just, especially losing Adelaide Oval, get blown out of the water, almost kind of give up. So, yeah, I guess the pressure heat back on the club, you know, what is it you had? The guy who was the Sack Hinkley um, stickers, yeah, he was out, they, they were out again out yeah. of Alberton putting that on the sign. So, yeah, I guess it, um, yeah, I guess just same old story again, really. So, I think the biggest thing that I had coming out of it, and fascinating to see what you think, was like in terms of the likes of Charlie Dixon, <laughs> George Yard is just going completely MIA after what the first quarter or yeah. whatever it was. Like the playing group themselves, like, They've got to look at this and go, how do we have so many dudes who just did not step up, right? And I think when you look at the Cats, they played as such a collective depth. Yeah. Like just the sh- like Max Holmes is their like most dominant player of that game, and it's Max Holmes. Like Whereas I feel like for the power, once Butters goes out, it all just sort of fell apart, right? Yeah, yeah. The only guy that looked like he was actually trying or you know could maybe even get them back in the game, even though they weren't going to, was Jason or Francis. Yeah. But apart from that, just... So many guys did not play well at all the whole night. It was just, yeah, too many passengers. I mean, yeah, the forward line was 
atrocious. Yeah, Charlie got the bronze cheer, cheers at um in the fourth quarter, which no doubt he's going to absolutely hate. So uh, so yeah, it was just a terrible night for so many power players. Yeah, I feel like Charlie's a pretty chill dude, though. Yeah. He, won't, oh. he won't react badly to that. <laughs> he always tried to uh, kick in. No, no, he's really chill. Really chill. <laughs> Stats high. What do you uh, Well, talking about Dixon, uh, surely Todd Marshall comes back in. I don't know about your opinion on that one. Uh, if he's like fit and rare to go, would you be taking Todd Marshall in over Charlie Dixon? I think he had three touches. Didn't look good at all. Yeah, that's – it's an interesting one because Todd Marshall hasn't played in like two months. Mm. He's played, sorry, one game in like two months or even half a game or whatever. So – is he going to be outside? I think the other one, I mean, Radagalea didn't do a lot as well. No. So, you know, is one, one of them, maybe one of them goes out for Marshall. It's, yeah, it's a hard one because I don't know if Marshall's going to be the answer for them. Mm. What about Zach Butters? Because obviously subbed out, went to hospital, had his ribs checked out. Uh, is he going to play? Because if he doesn't, this could spell disaster for No, no, no. If you ask Kane Corns, he's fine. He's actually a bit of a coward, I guess. Oh, well, apparently, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, he spoke. So he has a contract with Channel 7, so he spoke yesterday with them saying yep. he'll do everything he can to play, so it looks like he probably will play, you know, and it would have been worse for him, the team if he actually stayed on, given then he had some problems breathing, but yeah, yeah. I, he should he should play, like, I mean, it'll be massive if he doesn't, like, they'll be that <laughs> for them. Not to be that guy, but surely in the first contest, Jai Newcomb just runs straight into him and bumps him. Just really okay, tests well, those ribs D- out. Verid, I, I mean? also like that this guy is not to be that guy. He's always that guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah, if you're it's horse you, you're, just, you're going to go after him, aren't you? Yeah, yeah like, you can even just lay it like a, a fair bump. Just, just go like in that. and bump him and just yeah. say, hey, you got to breathe now, Zach. Yeah, go on. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Way to breathe, Brady. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that is going to be the case. Nice one. Uh, well, I guess looking forward then, like, Outside of the disappointment of last week, how do you think they actually do bounce back? Like, do you think they actually have it in them? Like, what do you reckon? Yeah, I think they do. Like, history's on their side, which is a weird thing because of what is it? It's like the last 11 teams that have lost a qualifying final by more than 50 points have won the next week. Oh, that's a great start. Huh. There you go. I'm going to start calling Simi in the stats yeah, guy. I'm happy You're just some dude. Yeah. So <laughs> is that because Port Adelaide lost their semi last year by 48 points? They're like, ah history. Yeah, we're going to do that on Pogs yeah. again. <laughs> um, oh, I think they, they actually, no, they went down to the qualifying final. Not, not that. that was their best showing last last year in the qualifying final. But yeah, that's right. They can't, like, the big worry for them is how they got torn apart by Geelong small forwards and Hawthorne small forwards are pretty damn good as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's the big issue, I think. The Darcy Burns Jones joined a defense that didn't work. He should play forward again, I reckon. So how I mean, how big of a loss is I guess big of a hole that's gonna be, even though he couldn't fill it. So but I think they can because who knows if the whole bubble's gonna burst. Like has surely has to burst at some point. <laughs> but that, yeah, I don't know. I, I, like they can win it. It's looking I guess it they'll go in the game where everyone thinks the Hawks will win, but they can win. I think they just gotta win the win the flip, win the midfield battle, win the clearances and like lock it in their front half, which is kind of a game plan. Mm. Well, if you ask Jack Ginevan, the Hawks bubble will never burst. Yeah, apparently, oh, yeah. So. That'll be he really Surely wanted to beat Jack that's Ginevan. that's getting a mention in the papers in the media over in Adelaide, in just going, you know, this this bloke thinks he's just going to stroll in and head to the SCG seven days later. Surely that's just the first thing you mention. You put it on the oh. on the whiteboard going, hey. <laughs> just an X over Jack yeah, Ginevan. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how, um, he goes on Friday night because last time we played out against the Crows at Adelaide Oval, we did nothing for like three quarters, kicked two jump time goals, and absolutely gave it to the crowd. <laughs> it, it was beautiful to see. It was yeah. beautiful to but see. so this is where you almost wish Sam Powell Pepper was still playing this season. Oh yeah, <laughs> just to oh. take him out. <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think when the other day Ken was joking around, he said, "Oh, Sam Doherty came back. Why can't you, Pep?" To, to <laughs> him, man. I think it went straight over Pep's head. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you mean? I, I'm ready. Let's yeah, go. I probably would just try and come back, wouldn't you? <laughs> He's running and kicking the footy, but yeah, I, I, I don't think we're going to see. I don't think we're going to see come back from Pep. <laughs> Too early, yeah. I mean, you hit on the smalls of the Cats and of the Hawks. I mean, what is what, in your opinion, is the powers sort of advantage against the Hawks? I think it's the midfield. I think it's going to be the midfield, especially if Butters plays. So they, I mean, you get you play Horn Francis. Yeah. From the off, you know, the, you know, having the first set of bounce for the first two quarters. If you can win that, that I guess midfield battle, win the clearance, win and win the ter- win territory, and then do what Paul like to do, lock in their front half, just repeat forward and 450 entries. Hope that their for- their key forwards can actually do something. 
hope that Willie Rioli has an absolute blinder because that will be it. And then, um, yes, yeah, so, and then I guess try and somehow stop their small forwards. <laughs> I like it because, I mean, that this was the matchup. I mean, the Hawks came flying back and nearly pipped them uh, earlier this season, right? No, the, the Hawks were out a mile in front. Oh, and the power, yeah, power, and, power, and, power and back. just pulled on the handbrake. Yeah, absolute chaos. So, yeah. I mean, I'm fascinated to see, like, how much of a hole, like, the Dan Houston, like, the Dan Houston-sized hole in and this Farrell. back half, like, it feel, feels just, like, wildly almost underrated. Like, I feel like we should be talking about this, like, non-stop for this yeah. game, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, he kicked three goals the last time they played. So, oh. before it came back, yeah, it's, it's a massive... It's a massive hole. Like him and Farrell, just the way they set up attacks off half back. I mean, yeah, they put in Ryan Burden, who played okay offensively, but last week def- had some shocking moments defensively. And then Darcy Burn Jones, just his kicking was atrocious at times. Mm. So it's, yeah, just like, that's just a massive hole, massive hole for them at the moment. Carlton esque, some would say. It was, yeah. Anyway. Are the obituaries being written if the worst does happen on Friday night and Port Adelaide go out in straight sets once again? Is it is it just as simple as pack her up, boys? Josh Carr, you're in the job. Oh, geez. Um, let's say yes. Yeah. I think that's what we're all expecting to happen yeah. in a way. Like, I mean, yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's hard because you never truly know, but I think everyone's just like, yeah, this is what will likely happen if it does, you know. Do they, and then if that does happen, do they just say to Josh Carr straight away, you know, you're the man, or do they do a process and then everybody just, everybody thinks Josh Carr's got it anyway, you know, it's a boat race kind of thing. <laughs> so, yeah, I think there it could, yeah, I'd like, it could very well be that. Hmm. He is Ken Uff. Is well, he? Not what I'm sure anymore. We said a couple weeks ago. A was. prelim might be Ken Uff. I don't know. No, I don't even think that's enough. No, I think they got to make the granny, as Simeon said last week. All right, Simeon, what's your uh, pick, tip, vibe for this one? Gee, I'm, yeah, I think Port's a – I think I'm, believe, I'm, I'm a believer in hot ball, so I think let's um, – I reckon they'll get up. I think they're just too much momentum. I think Port – yeah, I think their small forwards are going to destroy Port. Ooh, yeah. What do you reckon, Stats Boy? No, I'll agree with that one. I'm, I think every time Hawks have won, I haven't tipped them. I didn't tip them last week, so maybe if I tip them this week, Port will win, so we'll see what happens. Nice one. Alex? Hawthorne, just yeah. get it done. you got to go Hawthorne at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. What do you reckon the vibe will be amongst the power fans if they do lose this? <laughs> right. It depends. I reckon it depends how much they lose. Like, if it's a really close game and it picked to the last, maybe the ball are trying. If it's, like, blowout, mm. it could get nasty. It could get really nasty. Like, last week, a lot of people just left. So just <laughs> Fair enough. Thinking, you know, like... Yeah, I think I think if um yeah, I think if it's like a blowout again, like it could get bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I fear for the wizard's safety personally. <laughs> He's gonna have a few extra security. Yeah, points. just in case he kicks three or four, celebrates a bit too much on one of them, <laughs> and it's just like right. It's the wizard though; he might kick three into the river torrent. You yeah, know? Nah. the uh, <laughs> the optimist side though. I mean, say they do win this, how would you rate them against Sydney? They seem to play better when they're underdogs. I'll give them that. Like yeah. they, and they do respond. They responded after the Brisbane loss where Ken got booed. It was the worst. It was probably the worst game you'll ever see against St Kilda, but they responded. So they actually maybe go okay when they're underdogs. I, you you wouldn't. You, Sydney would still be favourites. It'd be hard to look past Sydney. But yeah. I think it's a weird old season. So if they do get, you never know. But yeah. they have to beat Hawthorne first, and that's looking quite unlikely. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Even Simeon's taking it one game at a time. It's what you're going to do in the finals. <laughs> but he didn't say it like that, like all the players do. So I like I that he's going to jump in the IG yeah. and just like, see you at the SCG, yeah. chumps, and away <laughs> we go. Go full Ginny. All right, he's been Simeon Thomas-Wilson. Read his stuff on the tyres at Code Sports. All the good stuff right there. Thanks for jumping on again, mate. No, thanks for having me. All right, it is our Midweek Madness show. We've already had Simeon on the chat. All things power. We now cut to the surprisingly tall, <laughs> apparently. Lockie McCurdy, he's got great hair. He's apparently he's taller than Alex. Yeah. What is going on, Mr. McCurdy? And we've got two teams still in finals, which not many states can say at the moment. So, uh, yeah, we'll take it at the moment. Uh, first things first, initial reaction of actually hanging out with Alex <laughs> on the weekend. I mean, we all are disappointed by him when we do meet him. That's how it usually <laughs> rolls. But, I mean, did he try to, like, slip a pie in your pocket? Did he do anything weird? Because he is known for just being a weird unit. 
I have to say he was very well dressed. I wasn't expecting oh, him to be that well dressed. Uh, but if you find the surprisingly tall my way, maybe you have to go the surprisingly small backwards. I feel like oh. he's gotta, he's gotta have, <laughs> I don't know which one's worse to get. I like that. That's good. <laughs> All right. So yeah. we start there. You guys are both obviously at the game on the weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alex, what did you want to ask McCurdy about the most? I mean, you see an absolute classic. This mm. one's come from the clouds. Let's go it's the awesome. Weekend, yeah. Loved it. You come out of that wanting to know what. Is that the loudest that you've heard the SCG just in your time either going to Swans games or covering Swans games? I haven't been for years, but that's the loudest I can remember it. I think so. I think especially the consistent noise over the the course of the game, really. And, I mean, you had players like Isaac Heaney um, saying it as well, that they haven't heard it that loud before. I mean, you're considering someone like Heaney has played since sort of, what, 15, 16. He's been around the best part of a decade, and he's going, yeah, I played through Buddy Era, I played through all that, and that's the loudest I've heard it. Wow. I think that's a pretty good sign of not only what a good game it was, but how um, how much footy is kind of developing in the state up here, I think. I think the biggest thing to come out of it is like the Heaney game, right? Yeah. Like just an absolute classic. He has the hanger, yep. he has the one-handed mark, which was sick. Uh, we'd actually sort of discussed this on last week's show yeah. about like grabbing a game by the scruff of the neck, and we weren't sure if he was up to it. Turns out he was, <laughs> well, spoiler well, alert. Well and true. Uh, I mean, how do you put this in perspective? I mean, just in terms of context for Heaney. I think it's definitely a continuation of what he's done this year, but especially talking to him post-game, you get the sense that he's maybe been a guy who's copped a bit of criticism in the past for not producing in the biggest games for the Swans. Often um, he, he has quieter Septembers when he's been here before. He hasn't really taken one of those big finals games uh by the scruff of the neck, like you said. And you could see he was just willing the team over the line um, on Saturday afternoon. He was the one guy who was consistently performing every single quarter, doing what he could. You kind of looked at halftime and went, oh, he's actually had a fair bit of the ball, even when Chad and maybe Errol hadn't quite had as much of it. And then in that that last moment of the, the, the first half, when he took that one-handed mark, like you said, it was just that little bit of belief. I mean, they were still basically four goals down, but it gave them that it was their first mark inside 50 for the entire match. So you kind of go, oh, wow, that was like, it, it took a while for them to to find that path forward. But you kind of had belief that once they did, they could make the most of it. And it didn't quite turn in the third quarter, but his performances again kept them in it, kept them in it. And then he finally had some help in the fourth quarter, which made all the difference. Alex? Oh, no, I just thought it was one of the great, the greatest individual performances yeah. by a Swan in a game that I can remember and quite possibly... Not just one of the great finals games, but one of the best individual performances of a guy lifting a team over the line. I just want to point point out that he paused before that because he blacked out just with all that. He's, like, oh, he's just like, I honestly <laughs> blacked out a couple of times on Saturday. I stood up that fast. The blood just rushed everywhere else. <laughs> like this. Alex mini stroked on yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in terms of like their preparation then for next weekend, um, not this coming weekend, I mean, how does it help them having that one week off, just let everything sort of settle? Like, are you sort of looking at any players out there that might need that extra week of sort of recovery? Uh, I mean, there's a few guys. I think Justin McInerney mm-hmm. is definitely one who probably wasn't quite at his best. Uh, I think by the sounds of things, the initial plan was going to be for him to be the sub and then everything that happened with Brayton Campbell last week, um, not only the passing of his grandfather, but um, he had a slight groin issue that they weren't sure about, but they, they were confident in him to play as a sub. So I think they flipped around. I mean, you've got a few other guys. Obviously, Tom Papley played an epic four-quarter performance for his first game in basically two months. So he'll benefit from another couple of weeks off. Um, and guys like Brady McGrundy, uh, Will Haywood, uh, who have been kind of carrying things throughout the year. And even Isaac himself, he, he broke his nose in the game. So he'll appreciate a bit more time to recover from that. So I think that just means they get to kick, kick the feet up, hopefully watch... Uh, the Hawks and Port kind of crash into each other and, and have a bit of a physical affair and then go, okay, we, we've got them for the taking at the SCG on our home turf uh, in Friday week. I just want to see Heaney come out with like a uh, the Heen man, the, the mask. Batman mask. Like just yeah. like lean into it, right? Pretty cool. What are we doing here? <laughs> he has got to hide his beautiful face. Uh, yeah, I don't reckon he put a mask over that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> sure. well, you, you guys always talk about that. That's it. good. He is handsome. Yeah. He can be, I yeah. guess. <laughs> All right. Uh, turning to GWS, yeah. and obviously the big sort of question ahead for them this week is, you know, they play the Brisbane Lions. Mm. They do play them at home, though, which is kind of fun. This matchup is 
very tasty, I think is the word to sort of put it. Like it is such a tasty, fun, weird matchup. Uh, how do you think GDOS approach this after the disappointment of last week? Well, I think it's definitely disappointment from last week. They know that that game should have been theirs. They, they know that mm. they, I think the Swans, the stat was they led for less than six minutes of the entire game. So it, it was, in, it was a, a steal, essentially, the Swans got in the end. So the Giants are, have kind of had to deal with that at the start of this week. But I think they've also got a lot of confidence that it, it was easily the best game of the round and probably the two teams playing at the highest level of the round. So they know that if they're competing with the Swans and leading against the Swans for 120 minutes, essentially, out of 125 minutes, that they're in a pretty good place. So I think as long as they kind of hold that belief, uh, they should be okay. And I think they'll take a bit of confidence out of their win over Brisbane and things like that. But... Yeah, I still think they're pretty well placed. Um, they're, they're a pretty resolute team in terms of not going into their shells too much when a performance doesn't, doesn't go their way. I mean, we saw that even against the Swans. They had a pretty disappointing defeat a, a two weeks earlier to the Dogs, but then came out absolutely firing. So I think we'll see that again, and then hopefully we can get that Carlton scarf that's on your table replaced with an orange and charcoal one for the team oh. that's actually still in it. To be honest, I'm up for the taker. Like, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm right here. Like, <laughs> what is anybody, that actually doing Anybody there? wants me, I mean... <laughs> After the showing that I copped on Saturday night with the squid in tow, it was in tears before the first quarter was done. Oh. <laughs> and so was I. Like, come on. Uh, Stats Boy, you got some questions for Lockie. Uh, yeah, just in terms of the forward lines, obviously Brisbane are one of the best forward lines in the competition. Would you rate GWS's forward line as, as the best or the second best to Brisbane? And do you think it's going to be a really high-scoring game uh, when they come up against each other? Well, it's interesting. It's actually something that um, we're going to look at a bit this week with Callum. Um, so we're going to do a bit of a deep dive into the two forward lines, but particularly awesome. the, the efficiency in front of goal because yeah. you've actually got Brisbane who probably the worst kick for goal in the comp at the moment. So and accurate. you've got the Giants, who are the best kick for goal in the comp in terms mm. of accuracy. So it, it's going to be a really important matter of who takes those chances. I mean, you, you see, I think the stat at the moment is something like you've got six of the Giants' main goal kicks who are kicking at 60% or more yeah, in front of goal. The Lions don't have a single guy above 60% yes. at the moment. So yeah. it, it's pretty damning in terms of what they're doing in front of output. Um, and if... The Giants can get those inside 50s going, especially at home, like they they do so well because that's one thing that they're pretty good at putting on the points at NG Stadium. I think that's where the Giants comfortably win it because I back the team system of the Giants' defence. When you've got Taylor, you've got Buckley, you've got Iden, you've got Himmelberg, um, you've got so many guys there who can go one on one and really work to stop teams, like they did for three quarters against the Swans. Whereas obviously you've got Harris Andrews there, but Jack Payne's in doubt and a few other guys at the lines where. Your, your third, fourth forwards for the Giants are going, okay, maybe Jesse gets double teamed, but this is my day. Yeah, it likes it like Cadman could have another big day. He was awesome on the way. He yeah. was great. Yeah, Alex, you've got some vibes on GWS as yeah. well. Yeah, is there a little bit of a concern about a potential slow start for the Giants? Because last time, obviously, against Brisbane, they got belted off the park in the first quarter, but 10 times this year, they've kicked two goals or less to open a game, and worryingly, three of those came really late in the season and in consecutive weeks against... Uh, the D's, Hawthorne and Brisbane. Is there a bit of a worry just about some firepower there? I think a little bit. And I think that's almost why we saw a, a better first quarter performance against them, uh, against the Swans from them. Um, there was a sense of, okay, if we want to, A, we know the Swans maybe struggle in the first quarter. So if we hit them hard there, that could be a good chance to put them away. And they should have put them away. That was clear. Um, but I think they know that they have to start hard. I mean, it's really good that this team has that finals experience from last year. There's obviously a few new little cogs in there. Darcy Jones, Cadman playing their first final series, Toby McMullen as well. But besides that, the rest of them are pretty well experienced now when it comes to playing in September. So yeah. they know that they cannot kind of take the foot off their pedal at any stage. And getting the second chance, you get a chance to assess what went wrong. You, it's probably the best criticism you can have. You can go back and look at, okay, we didn't do this right. We didn't take our chances. We, they didn't put their foot on the throat of the Swans when the game should have been over really by half time. And the fact that they can now reflect on that, they have two options. They can either go, okay, that's disappointing and get down in the dumps, or they can go, we know what we did wrong. Let's fix it. And the, the way I sense Adam Kingsley and the coaching staff are there, they'll make sure that they're in that latter group. I dig it. You also had some thoughts on the Giants in, or at least the fact that Green and Co won't have as bad. Yeah. Game. Well, to, yeah, uh, Toby. Toby Green and Brent Daniels just oh. honestly must hate Dane Rampey and Harry Cunningham. So they'll be, time, yeah. they'll be looking forward to this weekend because yeah. I think they've kicked a combined like two or three goals against the Swans this year. But Toby Bedford feels like an important player because the tagging role of the Giants as a team played on Errol Gould, and you'd think that goes to Zorko, but if Bedford's back, does he go to Neil? Mm. 
Yeah, I, well, Bedford went to Neil last time. Um, I spoke to him earlier in the week and he was like, yeah, I think that's probably going to be my matchup, but I'm not sure. Um, he got the big tick of approval from the skipper today. So Bedford definitely in. He will definitely be playing against the Lions, which is great news. Um, and, and yeah, Toby Green's an interesting one. Uh, my favourite stat out of the weekend was that in the Rampy Green matchups this year that they've played each other three times, Rampy actually has more goals. Yep. He's kicked oh one of the weekend, God, and Toby Green's kicked none uh, <laughs> in the three ma- uh, matchups. And I think that just obviously shows how much the Swans can switch on when they need to defend. But yeah, Toby was, you could tell flat chatting today to media. He was like, I was really disappointed mm. that I wasn't able to make the most of some of those chances. So uh, I think he's the sort of guy who loves bouncing back and, and making uh, a bit of a statement. And I'd be a bit worried for the Lions defenders who have to go up against him on the weekend. Nice one. Mm-hmm. That's got anything else? Uh, no, I was, I was literally going to touch on Toby Green mm-hmm. and Ben. I was a, a little bit disappointed in Brent Daniels. Do you think he's another guy? You said Toby Green will bounce back. Do you think, yeah, Brent Daniels is that other guy that's going to bounce back? He's had an awesome year. Yeah, I think so as well. I think being a, he, he's just, he's such a class act at the moment. He, mm-hmm. His ability to kind of impact the game, not just on the scoreboard, but around the midfield as well. And that's probably something we didn't see as much on the weekend. He didn't spend that time on ball that no. he's kind of had that flexible role at this year. So, I expect to see that a little bit more. And I think it's almost with Toby Bedford that they can kind of have that combined role of sending both into the into the stoppages and going, okay, let's just go pressure mad. Because that's the thing. Their pressure was incredible against the Swans. Mm. I think it was 206 or 208 or something nuts like that. And no other team got near the 200. So you had a team who was doing everything right. And it's just, if they can bring that again, I don't see how the Lions match it. They're telling yeah. me it was elite pressure rating then. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That, that, that's yeah. weird rating. Yeah. <laughs> just, but how do you work it out, Green Jim? is elite. That's how it works. That's how I get that. Mm. Nice one. Anyway. What are we thinking sort of crowd-wise? Because I know they've had the two big crowds this year against the Swans and mm. Collingwood to kick off the year, but everything else has been below sort of 10,000. So surely for a final, what is, what's the vibe? Sort of 15 to 20 up. plus? Mm. I think they'll be disappointed if they don't get close to 20. Um, I, I think that's at least the aim, but it, it will be a hard task. I mean, obviously, if you have a big Victorian club, like obviously they've had a few, I think it's their first final there since 2019. Um, so they've had, I think, three finals there in their history. Obviously, the prelim in 2016 is the one that kind of st- sticks out, but then it's not a, a big travelling club, maybe. You obviously get a lot of committed Brisbane fans down, but it's not a Collingwood. It's not a, a Essendon, Carlton, one of those big teams. So it's going to have to be a lot of people from Western Sydney Giants fans mm. and, and hopefully a few footy fans being the one game in town uh, for the code. So we should get a few out there. Yeah. And I'm what, just what's like, the complaining about? Like the, the shrugging, the arms. What, what's wrong with Giants Stadium? My, I, no, my, this is mine. So I should be a Tom Green ambassador. Like I think we should band all the gingers together. <laughs> we take over the Tom Green hill. And we just start that's standing there smashing. T- oh, yeah, that's out there. They can there. make another hill. I reckon we just get some spot at the showgrounds and go absolutely hammer and tongs, get Tom Green, just the fan club. We'll get a bunch of gingers there. We'll pack it out. It'll be the weirdest little bit of orange you could ever absolutely imagine. It'd be awesome. How are the Giants not leaning into this? This is racist, <laughs> I reckon. I reckon if you start it, you can get a following going over there. All right. The seats are all orange, so it helps. This is it. We'll blend in. Yeah. Uh, I like this. That's the rest of my week sorted. I'm just going to be working on this nonstop. It should be apples. Awesome. Well, McCurdy, before we let you go, I mean, what's the tip for this week's game? I'm going Giants. Uh, I'll back the Swans is one of the few tips I actually got right last week. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to back the Giants in. They were, I think they did enough against Sydney to kind of go nut West or a real deal this year. And at home, my, my other favourite Giants stat is every time they've been in a final series, they've won at least one final. Uh, so I, I think that'll continue this week. Once more, where, where the stats that? guy where has been that? outstated. I, I'm trying to let the, uh, the big J journalist, as you're calling him, shine. That's, 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 that's not my time to shine. They're the big J journalist. You're the stats guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. should be throwing the stats at the journos. What are you doing? <sighs> Can't take him anywhere. Either way, this has been Lucky McCurdy. Thank you for jumping on, mate. This has been good to chat all the Sydney teams. Anytime. Let's go, Giants. All right. In the final of our big J journalist, we bring on, I don't know. Look, he covers a team that I now hate with every <laughs> fibre of my being. It is Code Sports' very own courier mail's Callum Dick. Callum, what is going on after this Lions beat down on my beloved Blues on the weekend? How are the Lions feeling? Uh, I think the Lions are feeling quite good. I think Jack Payne maybe is a bit uh, mm. touch and go, obviously, the big story this week. But uh, I think they'll be head down to Sydney relatively confident. Uh, if they can play their best footy, they could get the job done. So how do you think, like, obviously I was there on Saturday with a uh, very teary five-year-old next to me, a uh, combination of, like, I'm tired and also – I'm watching my dad just get angry and, and angry. Like, get, get me another hot dog. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just going to just delete hot dogs and twisties and I'm fine. But 
what worked from your sort of perspective so much better for the Lions than it has sort of again, you know, earlier on, on in the season against the Blues and uh, especially in some of their like weird little hiccups this year? Like what do you think sort of just coalesced perfectly for them? Well, I think it's, it's hard to uh, really use the Blues as a bit of a benchmark because in the, when those sorts of games happen, it's hard to say were the Lions that good or mm. were the Blues that bad, you know, obviously. A lot was spoken about the Blues preparation leading in and, you know, the decision to have Conning on the bench, all that sort of stuff. So, but, you know, you can only beat and perform against the team that's put in front of you and the Lions, you know, for, again, for the first half, played some of the best footy I think we've seen a team play this season. So it is a tough one because I think Lockie Neal said the other day, it's it's not something new. They've, they've played football like that, you know, throughout the season. The issue is the second half. Now, I think it's a bit different. Because when you're playing in a final and you've absolutely got the game locked up, I think it's, you know, players can go into preservation mode because, I mean, they just saw pain go down with an apparent knee injury as well. So if you know you've got the game and you're keeping, you're just going to naturally, you know, put the cue on the rack a little bit and make sure that you're, you're good to go for next week. So it's, I wouldn't have any issues really with, with the second half. I mean, the Blues finally came to play, but it's just too little too late. Yeah, I think the biggest thing that stood out to me being there in the stands was like, Clearly, just the speed in the midfield, right? And like, then as soon as it got to the forward line, like the likes of Rainer, Archie, and stuff like that, just like the speed, they just like tore Carlton apart. How do you think that actually matches up against GWS? Well, actually, chatting to uh, our mate Lockie McCurdy is we're heading down. Um, I'm heading down uh, for the game this weekend, and we're looking at just on paper across the two sides, and they match up very similarly. Like, if you look at Cam Rainer and Toby Green's stats this season, they're almost identical. We've yep. got. Lockie Neal, maybe the best clearance and contested player in the game. And then there's Tom Green, who's making claims to that as well. Both teams have a handy tagger in Toby Bedford and Josh Dunkley, obviously the key posts at both ends. Joe Danaher, Harris Andrews versus Sam Taylor and Jesse Hogan. So <laughs> it's um it's going to be a cracking game of football purely because just, on paper, the two sides profile is very similar with, with the stars that they have at their disposal. Basically the Spider-Man meme. Yeah, just going, yeah, we're the same. We're exactly the same. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Stats boy. Oh, uh, I just want to touch on uh, Will Ashcroft, probably one of his best games on the weekend. Uh, and then I do think he could be a future Brownlow medalist. I saw a few people talking about that, going past Lockie Neal, the new Lockie Neal. And then the other one was uh, obviously you get Marcus Ashcroft coming in as well. So I just Lions fan, uh, sorry, Levi. Levi. I, Levi. Marcus I don't know why. Is the old man. Marcus is the old man. I meant to say Levi. I knew I was going to say I mean, yeah. he, he might still be able to play Maybe stats, but I don't know. Back, but yeah. like, he's my era. Like, Marcus, I had about four different <laughs> footy cards one year, all of the same Marcus Ashcroft. You know, he kept getting doubles. There you go. You had one year, I had like a million Marcus Ashcroft. Was that so I'm like, I'm sick of Marcus <laughs> Ashcroft. And then on the weekend, I'm like, I'm sick of his son as well. Next year, I'll probably be sick of his other son. Yeah, Levi. I meant to say Levi. Just the whole hype around. And the Ashcrofts, I think, uh, yeah, how's that going up in Brisbane? And is everyone up and about about them? Yeah, so um, Will, he's he's essentially still in his first season, right? Because yep. he was playing such lights out football early. He would have won the Rising Star last year if not for that injury. So, and he's come in, and yeah, he's just finding plenty of the footy. So, if you, if as someone who watches Brisbane closely, he's, he's obviously in that midfield rotation. They love that because it helps Hugh McCluggage go forward a bit more, and he's been hitting the scoreboard more regularly as well. So when you've got another person that can go into that rotation, it's fantastic. But it's more so what he's doing uh, behind the ball as well. So we've obviously, we've given Dane Zorko all his plaudits throughout the year for what he's been able to do since going back there. But if we actually watch with how the Lions sort of deploy their rebounding game, uh, Ashcroft's added another layer to that. So he and, he and Zorko will actually tag team that role in defensive 50 mm. and be the two because they're the two of the better kicks in the team. They're the two that they try to get the ball to to then launch their forays forward. And then McCluggage as well will sort of roll through there. So he's added another layer for them in that aspect. I ran into Simon Black at the Gabba um, on Saturday night and he said, he, you know, he loves him. Obviously, he played with his, with his dad, Marcus, his as well. He yep. said, if there's one thing I'd love him to do is get a bit more of the contested footy. Yep. Um, but, I mean, when you've got the likes of Josh Dunkley and Lockie Neal there as well, it's not something that maybe Will has to add to his game right now. But um, I think if we're going to start talking Brownlows and being the next, the next Lockie Neal, it's, uh, mm -hmm. he's going to have to start, you know, getting that. But he's in his essentially his first season. He's in his first final series and he's playing lights out. So you can't really ask for much more. He also got called some pretty ugly things in the crowd. <laughs> oh, did you, from you or? <laughs> not no, from me. No, not I'm me. a pretty chill kind of thing. <laughs> but wow, it was uh, ugly. Too. Oh, really? 
just air, classic blue supporters. Air comments and just some other pretty bad stuff where I'm like, oh, he's, I gotta. He's got hair like Hercules. I yeah, mean, he's, he's, yeah he's awesome. He's been groomed to play football. So. I love and it. Yeah, Absolutely. His brother's going to be an absolute jet as well. He had one VFL game for the Lions a few weeks ago and was best on ground. Tore it up, it's yeah. Just, it's not really fair, is it? No, it's and then they're going to get him there. Yeah, pick one, obviously, with the father-son. That's just that's just very frustrating for all the other teams, I reckon. The but, rich get richer. Yeah, <laughs> too good. They've also got, well, they used to have Daniel Rich, I'm just saying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So in terms of this setup against JEWS, like how are you sort of looking at the game? Are you, I mean, are you excited for it? Do you think Brisbane can actually win it? What, they went 0-2 this year against yeah. uh, the Giants. Can they make it 1-2? and What do you think? Um, I think Jack Payne's obviously is a big watch, um, but maybe not as much as people think, um, you know, around the numbers. And Dara Joyce hasn't, you know, with Joyce back there, he obviously played against the Giants at the Gabba as well a few weeks ago. They haven't been markedly worse without without uh, Jack Payne there. So um I think if you if you go back to the Gabba game as well, almost every metric suggests that the Lions should have won. They just the classic they couldn't kick straight. I think expected score the Lions were meant to win by five goals. So it really is a Jekyll versus Hyde scenario where the Lions can't kick straight and the Giants can't miss. So yeah. if if we sort of revert to the mean somewhere for both teams as well um, and everything else stays the same, then you would suggest the Lions definitely go down there and give themselves a chance. But they're also on the road. You know, the Giants are going to be singing after last week and they're a very tough team to play no matter where you play them, let alone on their home deck. So I think maybe for some of the younger kids, the fact that it's out at uh, at Blacktown, you know, it might not even be a sellout. So you're looking at, you know, 23 or whatever it is, 1,000 people there. It might not feel like a final, which might be able to help. Um, I think the Lions as well, who have maybe looked a bit deer in headlights sometimes or got a bit nervous when they've been trying to save games, et cetera. So that could play into it too. Nice one. I mean, the other sort of thing I think that's looming most for me in my brain is Toby Green. Like he had a pretty off-ish kind of game last week, right? Yeah. And like he just looms large. Like how do you think the Lions sort of approach him? Yeah. So Brandon Stasovich has come back in. He had a came back um, against the Blues and hit the ground running. So I spoke to him after the game and he's feeling really fresh. So he'll get that match up. I think they've had some some pretty good battles in the past. And yeah, I think it really is set up for a, we're obviously going to talk about Danaher and Hogan and that head-to-head battle, et cetera. But really, if if Toby Green kicks three goals, the Giants probably win. And if Cam Rayner kicks three goals, then Brisbane probably wins, you know? So it's it's kind of a, a game set up where there's so many players from both sides who can win the game off their own boot. And I think that's what makes this one Really exciting. But, yeah, Toby had a down day. Probably cost him the win um, yeah. uh, last weekend as well. So we know, obviously, he's a, he's a proud player and um, I'm sure he's going to get up and, and uh, dig in this weekend. He's just got those tired dad looks now too. Oh, does he? Oh, oh you know about it. Yeah. I know all yeah. about that. <laughs> what about you, Stats Boy? Anything else? I was just going to say, I think you mentioned Cam Rayner, but who do you think's the key to, uh, yeah, Brisbane winning? Just a simple one to, to end. Um. Well, I'm probably going to use this line every time, but it's Harris Andrews. I Harris mean, Andrews, yeah. You know, he's, he's, I think I said it last week, if Andrews has a down day, the Lions probably lose, particularly if Jack Payne can't get up. Yeah. Um, so if Andrews, if the Lions can get that match up right, I mean, we saw at the Gabba a few weeks ago, GWS wanted Hogan on Joyce. The Lions wanted Hogan on Andrews. They do this, this dose do and inside 50, <laughs> they all run into around. each yeah, other. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty funny to watch from the ground, but. If Andrews plays his game and can can limit uh, Hogan, I think it goes a long way to to the Lions getting the job done. No, I nice agree. one, nice. All right, so what's the tip? Oh, I've got to go to the Lions. Yeah, well, so I think it's going to be. Uh, we'll, we'll say we'll say five points in a Ooh. in a cracker. Nice one. That sounds good. Awesome. Well, we can't look. You know, we can't wait to see what you uh you and Lockie come up with at the game. It's going to be awesome. So look forward to your coverage from there, Callum Dick. Thanks for jumping on with us. Thanks, guys. Have a good week. All right. How good are our chats with actual Big J journalists, gentlemen? That was fun. And I feel very smart now. I'm yep. not, but I feel smart. Yeah, that's, that's all so, that matters, yeah. Uh, let's do some yeah, nahs, because you've now just learned a bunch about the power, the Giants, the Swans, and the Lions. And the Giants. I said the Giants. You said the Giants. <laughs> and, the, um, uh, wait, wait, and the Giants. <laughs> We're here. All right. Let's do some yeah, nahs. Made one. Matrix Fire. This is a comment from YouTube. Bevo needs to go. Yeah, nah. Yeah. Yeah. They need a change. I think coaches said culture. I think Bevo's culture is waning. It's cooked. They don't want to go. You consistently have players at the end of every year wanting to leave. There's, there's, there is a retention problem there. 
He's also got this list that he has never got to the top four ever. I do love that people go, oh, he's got the best list in the comp. And then you go through, you're like, well. It's not the best list, but it should be better. Bond. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then you look at it, how many other top 50 players do they actually have on that list? And it's oh, pretty Libba. scarce, I'd say. Yeah. You go uh, through the top 50 and you go, he's where do you He's never Libba finished drop? top four yeah. in his career. Yeah. That's fine. The other so thing, far, I think they need to change as well because they've got so many good young guys now. Yep. Just to build up from that. They're not they don't, probably a lot of the, like Bond's gonna not want to admit going, oh, we might have to build it's up. It's gonna be again. great in two years when Riley Sanders has had enough of being better. It's like going back. Nah, to he'll Cassie. be good in a couple of years. The fact that it turns into what, a to be bevoed, an actual turn of phrase, like it's not great. No. It doesn't reflect great. But I think look, I still think the turnaround that they had this year in the back half it was gets good, him yeah. another year to at least go, look, if you come out absolutely on fire next year. This is this might be the last. This is the last. He's dance. in his I final year of his contract next exactly. year. Last dance. So. <laughs> it is the last dance. Let's go. Uh, I can't wait for the uh, the papers to have the last dance. Bevo. I don't think just, that's happening. Just like Phil Jackson. <laughs> no, isn't, isn't the last dance the Col- Collingwood with, with yeah, them resigning the, the everyone for next year? Did one year. All the old dudes. <laughs> yeah. Last one. Uh, we have a Noah JG five TW comment. That's definitely not a bot stats boy. No, uh, I love not. the show boys. <laughs> Yeah, this is definitely a bot. No, it's uh, not. It's not. Heaney is the best player in the comp. Actually, no, this might be Alex's. Yeah, uh, it's no, it's not. Mine's like Alex Donnelly 14, like YTJ7. Oh. I don't know why. Sure. Get, get, get into him. So does he love the show? Yeah, nah. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, <laughs> Heaney is the best player in the comp. Yeah, nah. Oh. I'm still going to say nah. But I'll say nah, but in I terms of- I am happy too. And look, when I, when I am wrong, I say I'm wrong. I'm more than happy to admit my faults. That's one of my amazing aspects of me as a human being. (laughs) Jesus. I have a lot of uh, hubris and humbleness about myself. Hubris. (laughs) (laughs) It's an interesting combo. (laughs) But last week, literally put it to Heen Man. So, so look, can he grab a game by the scruff of the neck? He definitely did. he just came out and did it. So when I'm wrong, I say I'm wrong. Hmm. I was wrong about that. He has a few more it. But the thing is, it's the first time he's really just gone, righto, game, you're mine. Put the team on his back, absolutely caned it in a final spot. It was absolutely awesome. Heen man, I still don't know if he's the best player in the comp, but that was what the best players in the comp do. I do, and he's top five for me. So yeah. I think at the end of the year, despite not winning any of the awards, you go back and look and go, he was the player of the year. If he, yeah, if he didn't get suspended, I'll, I'll well, agree. Well, also, I'll if agree. he wasn't rested in the last game, he wins the coaches' association votes as well. Maybe. And then if he comes out and wins a Norm Smith as well, you're just like, yeah. Yeah, checks yeah. out. Fair enough. The Heen Man's year. Uh, Matt CP 9WH, AFL should include finals for mark <laughs> and goal of the year. I had to include this because Alex and I on the Sunday show said absolutely, but I feel like you're on a different sort of side of this, Jim, and you weren't. You didn't get to have your say. I am actually going to land on your side. You know why? Okay. Is it because of the article that came out this morning where the guy in 1981 won goal and mark of the year in the finals? Oh, really? No. Oh, okay. Because it says goal of the year. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Not, it's not It's not the Toyota goal of the regular season. It's yeah. not the Toyota that mark, doesn't of, sound very mark good, does of the it? home and away season. <laughs> Thank you. Like, it's it's of the year. Mm. What is the year? It's 2024. Yeah. As yep. Richo said. This, this is quite simply the easiest argument in the world. Yep. It's of the year. If you're going to make it so that it's the regular season, the home and away season, then say that. And if Richo's come out and said, okay, guys, so now we have a mark of the year. We no, no, but he's, a, We should have a mark of the finals. And you're like, all right, Richo. No, but he said the season by. doesn't end till the final siren of the grand final. Oh, yeah, which is right. it, but the same thing. It doesn't. It's not goal of the season. Yeah. It's goal of, of the year. year. Yeah. It's 2024. It should be the preseason. It should be AFLW as well. I think open. It should be Auskick. Let's go free for all. <laughs> Look at what It should be me out there on Gox's bank just taking a scream over a staff boy. Because I'm there. Just let go, you beauty. That's how it should be. I would like be. to see you get up there yeah, that, that high after game. Uh, I definitely do <laughs> knee, ankle, foot, you, all in one. You destroy stats guys' kidneys with your no, knee. That's no. how high you I don't get. Okay. I just take one hand on it. I wouldn't get my knee up to his kidneys. <laughs> Even though he's about yay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, no, goal of the year, mark of the year, it should be the entire entirety uh, of the AFL season. That's yeah. the first time we all agreed on If they don't honestly. want it to be, change the name. Simple as that. Yep. I'm actually landing on year. That's fine. Where should Jack McRae go? This is not a year nah stats, boy. Yeah, what are you what, doing? I, <laughs> we have I, a simple I, I rule. Are they yeah nahs? It should be, should Jack McRae go to St. St. Kilda? Kilda. Yeah, read, nah. I didn't read that one, to be honest. I just copied and pasted wow. it. But yeah, should Jack McRae go to St. Kilda? How about that one? He feels a very St. Kilda player. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? He, I feel like the McRae-ness of this, it could be like a... 
Like must, he doesn't like what's his feel? What's his feel? What does Jack McRae feel like? Right? Richmond. He feels Saints. He no, feels maybe No, ethnic. he's a he's a classy Dylan, player on Dylan, his day. I think he feels Geelong. Dylan Shield is potentially going to St Kilda. Oh, so that, that is not a good pickup for St Kilda. Says you. You would kill for a Dylan Shield in your midfield. No, no, we would definitely he had a Liam He wouldn't even get yeah, in our did. midfield. Yeah. Uh, I've Dylan I reckon Shield. there's a potential for like a Richmond with like pick forty seven there. Just as, Maybe, enough, yeah. just as a guy to help nah, bring the young kids along. But Jack McRae's like, no, no, don't, no, don't want to go there. No, 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 it's vibes. He's not yellow and black. He's red, black, and white. He's not blues. He's not Melbourne. He's not Hawks. He is Mel- what about Melbourne. Coast? Geelong. Melbourne. Geelong. He feels Melbourne. I don't think they can afford him, but it's Geelong. Yeah, but if, if Essen in the black and red, I can see. <laughs> as I mentioned, Skilda. <laughs> Any red team. Is that what you're Maybe. <laughs> what is this conversation? Gold Coast. <laughs> Okay, he's he's going to stay in Victoria. I'm How like, do you what? know? Because I, I know him. I'm really are close to Are you his agent, boy? Yeah. You, you are the worst something? agent ever. Yeah. Worst. I just, I just don't want to tell you guys what's going on. <laughs> anyway, uh, Saints. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's secure. He, he feels Saints. Yeah, mm, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes Jordan. <laughs> Should West Coast consider trading pick three as part of the Liam Baker deal? Yeah. No. no. Don't Absolutely do it. Absolutely not. No way is he worth pick three. West Coast no, as a, a part of the deal, stats yeah, guy. It's is, not. They're can, not giving up pick three. Can you guys just stop being so dumb? Like no, with, no, no, no. Like with your dumbness and just stop being dumb. Because obviously, as we've talked about, like Ralphie's kicked this around, right? It would be they get six and Baker for three I other stuff as well. Yeah, right? no. And so you move back three spots. You're no, Baker, you're doing other stuff. All right, still no. Still no. I'm still yeah. I'm still no. Keep pick three. So. <laughs> That's fine. Pick three is the actual better. proper question rather than, no, pick three, Lou Baker's just not fair. As a part of the not. deal, no. Just give him his second rounder. He's out of contract. Yep. Play hardball. Yeah, it's not going to happen. I agree. Yeah, fine. I agree. Just do not consider letting it's go It's dumb three. people who keep writing questions like this. <laughs> I didn't uh, write the question. It was him. There we go. <laughs> we keep just pushing this narrative. It's not going to happen. All right. I'm going to well, go full, uh, what's his name, Big Ed McClure. It's not going to happen, Mitch. What are you talking about? <laughs> He's not going there. He's not going there. Anyway, uh, is What's Josh that? Battleworth a top 10 compensation pick? Yeah, nah. Absolutely not. I mean, when Lance Franklin was pick 19 as compensation, the whole system's just screwed He's anyway. a good player, but he's not yet. Yeah, nowhere near but, the heights of but that. But then you also need to add in when they go through the list of stuff like, yep, six-year deal, X amount of money. Uh, okay, who's he used to play for? St Kilda, how are they going? What's the vibe? Yeah, let's give him a top 10 pick. Oh, that doesn't ask Whereas if right. it was like Josh Battle leaving this one's about, yeah, pick 20, fine. Like it's, Even that seems it's like too high. We need to help St Kilda because they've been complaining all year about academies and fathers. Yeah, pick seven, shut up. Mm. You know what sucks? What? Everything about this entire system. We need yeah, to burn it down. it's so bad. Compensation, shut yeah, up, why is it, nerds. Why do we even why have to get that? compensation? I agree. Be better and he won't want to leave. Yep. He got like, sucked in. Apparently oh, he's been offered less because money. Because he's leaving, we don't want your feelings to be hurt. Here's a compensation. Shut up, idiots. <laughs> it's a business. That is horrible. Yeah. It's like he leaves, sucked in. You didn't keep your player. You know what you don't get in the NBA? <laughs> a compensation pick when someone leaves you in free Not agency. Wrong. Not wrong. It's ridiculous. You have to deal with it. Grow up, AFL. <laughs> Andrew Gill and Dylan, Tell get me. a haircut. This is ridiculous. Anyway, should Charlie Dixon be dropped? Yeah, nah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Are we all on the same I mean, page? Are you good at football or not? No. Then get out of here. Todd Marshall. What about I know Asaba? Do they drop him? Yeah. No, keep him. Asaba, I think he played better. I think he played better than, well, he, he was slightly. Yeah. Slightly it's better It's not than hard Charlie. to be better than Charlie. Yeah. I think one of them gets dropped. I wouldn't be surprised if they dropped both of them. Dixon out, Marshall in. And finally, we hit on this with Simeon. Is Ken gone if they fail to make the grand final? This is a very obtuse question. Who is Ken? He's the coach of the Port Adelaide Power. <laughs> is he gone if they fail to make the grand final? That would be the Port Adelaide Power. Everyone knows They'll that. They'll never <laughs> dare us to part unless you miss the grand final dun, dun. again. Um, yeah, they lose this week or they gone. lose at so all. What, what happens though? I think the more interesting question is how does it happen? So he goes... I think I've taken this playing list as far as I can. I think it's time for a new voice in the club rooms, and then they go to Josh Carr. Who's so, already, been, already there? Yeah. What are you doing? So, How's that new? So do they do they run a process where it's basically like, <clears throat> yeah, we know that Josh Carr is going to get it. We hit on this with Simeon. Yeah. It's a sham. I process. think it will just be straight in, but we'll see. Yeah, it's, I think it's worked twice ever. I think yeah. the quite simple thing is like Ken will step aside rather than just be shown the door. Yeah, I have enjoyed people. He's too loyal. He's, he's just not going to up and leave for somewhere else. It's like, yeah, but, yeah, if, but if somewhere else yeah. is like hosting Cash Cow or something like that for, <laughs> instead of Koshi, like we're laughing. Yeah. I don't know about that. But what if it's like uh, Don Pike going- <laughs> I just love that. Yeah. Just, you just, it's Cash Cow. It's like, is that Ken Hinckley? <laughs> What's going on here? And why is Cash Cow here again? <laughs> <laughs> how, how old is this show? So <laughs> what if, uh, 
if they do obviously get knocked out on Friday night and then Don Puck goes, hey, Ken, money. Just opens the briefcase. It's just money. It's worst case to have money. Surely Ken goes there. I think that's a good Maybe, outcome yeah. for Ken because he's like, well, this is I'm the bridging coach. I get to coach them up again and then I probably, by the point they're good again. Does he do the Paul Ruse? I just can so probably good bounce one. and lay hand over again. But, you know, make, sure. make your money, Ken. Make it. You're Ken off. <laughs> right. Before we leave, let's have a look at some of these odds here, Stats Boy. We are brought to you, of course, by Top Sport, the home of footy Absolutely. finals. Let's look at some finals futures right now. So as the week hits its midpoint, what are we looking at? In terms of premiership odds, we have only, of course, six teams remaining. What are we looking at here? Yeah, we've got Sydney Swans, deserved favourite, two ninety five. Geelong, uh, 4 bucks. Hawthorne, $5.50. Brisbane, $6.50. GWS, $6.50. <laughs> then you've got a pile of uh, crap. And then you've got Port Adelaide, $16. That is a big drop off from $6.50. I can't believe that. Interesting. That, that really should be a lot closer, I think, to the Hawks. So how do we feel about this, Alex? Uh, I'm surprised Geelong are $4, considering they just know how to win these finals. Swans are deserved favourites, as yep. we've seen this year. They're the, they've been just the best team in it. But... That GWS a six dollars fifty. That's I good value. That's that was the one that stood yeah. out. So I think we all like, like six fifty for GWS. You, like, mm. Yeah, they're at home against Brisbane this week. Win this, you're then playing Geelong, Geelong. at the G. Who they seemingly of, weirdly always beat. You're not afraid yeah. of the G this year, the Giants, and then you're again at the G for the grand final, and you might just win in, at six fifty. I feel great. That's, about that. that's the best one, and it's yeah. the same thing. If you think Port Adelaide can somehow knock off Hawthorne, they haven't lost to the Swans in like nine years. True that. I like that. Sixteen bucks is that's what I mean. If you're crazy. Just happy, if you're that just like is crazy. Twenty bucks, and you're just and you're just right. They get into the preliminary final. Like, I'm. They're on. the home team, and they're ten dollars less than uh, yeah, ten dollars more. Chaotic. Sorry, than Hawthorne. Uh, to miss the grand final, I love some of those ones as well. Port Adelaide is a dollar twelve. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Feels like pretty. It's good. not the. I'm back in Geelong. The fact that Geelong is a dollar eighty-eight. That's not miss horrible. Is pretty interesting. Mm. That's like you're already basically at even odds, essentially that's, for like. A head-to-head against whomever yep. to miss, so not bad. Uh, and the Premiership Quinella. Oh, to make well before we get to that, to make grand final, Sydney a dollar sixty, Geelong a yep. dollar eighty-five. GWS is three dollars. That's also really nice. Yeah, I really like that one mm. too. So because that's not even to win it, but away we go. Righto, let's do it. The Quinella wasn't it, Stats Boy? That yeah, we got at? the exact Quinella. I don't mind the Quinella. I think Alex is all over this one. We both said it. I think last week or the week before when the final started, GWS and Sydney just to make the grand final five bucks on mm. top sport. I, I really, really yeah. like that one. That that's just like oh, I think we said from the start that this could be the grand final, and they were the two best teams over the weekend. I think. Uh, I've, I've, when when the finals break came out, I'm like. Swans beat Giants. Giants go the reverse way, run the table, grand mm. final. I really like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'd also, as I've mentioned time and time before, Geelong Hawthorne repeat at six Ooh. bucks. Don't mind that. Because, look, you say, Possible. like, GWS were one of the two best teams of the weekend. Hawks are pretty bloody good. Just yeah. saying. Just saying. But dogs are, yeah. And it's no going to be an interesting matchup, obviously, City. for the Hawks this week. But, geez, if they get past there, you feel pretty good about them making it all the way. Let's bloody well go. <laughs> uh so that's your pick then, Stats Boy and Alex. Sydney GWS like, at five. Yeah, yeah pretty similar there. Pretty yeah. happy with it. I don't mind it. All right, there you go. Those odds are, of course, brought to you by Top Sport. Go check them out. It is the home of footy finals. And that'll do us for the AFL Today Show for today. We'll be back with the AFL Today Show tomorrow for the Thursday team show. Big weekend of teams. Oh, let's Friday go. and Saturday night games. How long is the show going to go for with just two games? I mean, it'll still be a live show. Saturday, oh, okay. well, for yeah, to set up Friday and Saturday properly, we'll be breaking down a lot of the player props, some of our very favourite player looks, all this sort of stuff, and all the goal kicker looks as well for the weekend ahead. So still riding know. that wizard, fifty one dollars most most goals in Ooh. finals. Very nice, nice. So thank you to the Ding guy for jumping on, Alex and Stats Boy. Thank Cheers. you, and of course to our Big J journalist buddies, Simon Whiskey, and of course. Uh, we had Lockie and we had Callum. So very, very fun to chat to them. You can read all their stuff on Code Sports as well as their respective, what's Daily Tally, Courier Advertiser. Mail, and the Tizer. Yep. Code Sports, all of them as well. That's what I said at the start. All right. Say, yeah. <laughs> so remember to smash a like for all of our stuff across all the social channels and get around all the shows that we do. AFL Today Show, of course, this one. AFLW Today Show, the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast. NFL Australia is now back as well. NBA Australia will be back in about a, oh, God, three weeks. Oh, boy. And, of course, hold all tickets for your GGs. Love that. So get around all of those on Facey, IGX, TikTok, 
And of course, jump in YouTube, throw in some comments. We'll address them on the show because we'll have another show tomorrow. So you better jump on this one. Is Power Prawn Star okay? We haven't heard from whoever they are in a couple of days. I know. We so we're still going to go hang out with them, but gather around. So it's all yeah, I can't wait fun. for that. Yeah. All right. Get around all of them like, I don't know, the Brisbane fans getting around their Lions on the weekend. I haven't even really dug into how bad that was, but it was yeah, it wasn't great. You're just like me, pretend like in 2020 grand happen, final, yeah. it just didn't happen. It didn't happen. Yeah, zero zero in a finals is not great. Yeah, in a in a quarter of footy, and then boom, a quarter yeah. and a half. Yeah. Tell you what though, those first three goals of the third quarter are pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's it. We'll catch you later this week for more AFL today. Until then, look after yourselves. Whiskey and footy's back. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.